guys, I just wanted to give you an update because a lot of you that follow my channel know that I live in Miami, Florida, and we were recently hit by Hurricane Irma, which caused um, a lot of damage here. But um, it was a unique experience for me as a nurse, and I thought you guys might benefit from it, so I wanted to share that experience with you. So I took a few notes. Um, just to give you an idea of what I did go through, I live in downtown Miami, and up until the last 12 hours prior to the hurricane actually hitting us, it was headed dead on as a Category 4 towards Miami. And I did want to tell you, one of the best websites to look at as far as tracking the hurricane is, I'm going to see if I can put this link, I'll put the link below, but it's the nhc.noaa.gov. So whenever you might be experiencing a hurricane coming towards you, you definitely want to be watching this website. This is the most accurate website to get all of your information from. Basically the difference between this website and all of the other simulated models that a lot of the other news channels share is that these people, they actually put a person in a helicopter directly, I don't know if it's inside, whatever they do, they fly in the storm and they get exact measurements. It's updated, I think they do it every three hours, so it's not updated hourly, so you sort of need to know that. This website actually showed six hours prior that the, um, that, sorry, the hurricane was shifting towards the west. Before, and we saw this six hours prior to any of the other news channels saying this. So if you are in that, um, if you are in that, you know, predicament, make sure you do check this website. It is the most accurate. So what was this hurricane like and why was it different than any other hurricane that I've been through before? Well, the main thing was the, the length of the hurricane. It started um, Friday night. We started to feel the wind. And it was not normal wind. I know what a normal thunderstorm sounds like in my building, and it was very different. And then all day Saturday, all day Sunday, it was pretty intense with um, tropical storm force winds and then hurricane force gust. I'm not exactly sure how strong the winds came. Some of the winds felt very strong. Some of them didn't feel strong at all. And then we would go through periods where there was hardly anything, just a lot of rain. And then there would be periods where it was just when, 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 and it was a little bit scary at those times. Um, all in all, though, as you know, Miami did not get hit as hard as other places like the Keys and the west coast of Florida. So we do have on the east coast to be grateful for that. We were anticipating a direct hit, and we did not get that. So obviously, we did not suffer the damage that unfortunately the west coast did suffer from. All in all though, the length of the hurricane and the hurricane force gust for so long did ultimately cause a lot of damage to power outages, power lines, um, a lot of damage to vegetation. So it was a lot of cleanup um, and a lot of problems afterwards that you, know, you sort of don't anticipate. I had already decided to stay. My agency asked me if I would be Team B Relief and my husband was in town, his parents were here, they weren't leaving, so we just decided to stay. A lot of people uh, put comments that, you know, I was stupid for staying, but if you think that, if you're going to be judgmental and you are thinking about being a nurse or you're thinking about being a doctor, this is something you want to think about. You might not be able to leave and still have your job when you get back if that is the case. So these are things that you really want to think about. Um, and if you try to leave, the hospital will say, well, hey, you can just sleep here. So if you are thinking about going into healthcare and you know for sure that you would not want to stay during this sort of event, you really might want to reconsider it because you might have to stay or you might lose your job. Um, I was not in that predicament. I wanted to stay. Um, I had never done disaster relief before and I really wanted to go to Houston, which was where I was um, getting ready to go to until the hurricane started coming towards us. So I really wanted the experience. And um, so let me just tell you what my experience was working as a nurse after the hurricane. There's a lot of things that you don't think about when so many people don't have power. 
one of the most safest places that people could go to is the hospital. And so the hospital was inundated with people. The first two days, I worked 11 days straight. <laughs> and every day that I was leaving, they were begging for me to come back in. So they were doing things like offering childcare, which I didn't need, but they were offering childcare. They were giving bonuses for people to come back. They were just, the hospital was just so desperate to get people to come back because there were so many patients there. Um, the first two days I worked and I worked in the ER. And I'm not an ER nurse, but I did what's called ER overflow. And because I've been going to that hospital for so long, if I don't have overflow patients, then they just have me help the other ER nurses. So around three o'clock, I didn't have any overflow patients anymore. And they because they were getting rooms really quickly. So they asked me to help out the nurses. And um, this was when a code green was, no, sorry. Yeah, code green was called. And I didn't know what a code green was, but everyone started getting an order. So I started asking what's code green. And they said that it was a mass casualty. So this was definitely the hardest experience of the hurricane, but it was from the nursing home patients in the Hollywood nursing home that there was the, um, I think it was like six or eight patients died. That was definitely the hardest thing because we started receiving a lot of those patients and the patients just looked like they had some of the worst heat exhaustion. I, to be honest, I've never seen heat exhaustion before. So I'm not sure if this was extremely bad. It looked really bad to me. Um, I don't know how else to say it. The patients were extremely dehydrated. The saddest thing to me was that you could tell which patients were the nursing home patients because when they were coming in from the ER, all of the nursing home patients were just beet red. So I was helping out some of the nurses um, take care of these patients uh, by uh, starting IV fluids, starting IVs, and the patients just looked really bad. I remember one of the patients from um, about here up, it just looked like he had been locked out in the sun for hours. and. I'm not sure what his baseline was, but he wasn't talking. He looked extremely lethargic. Um, initially, we were told that these patients were just here for replacement, but then when a lot of them started coming in, all the nurses were like, uh, no, <laughs> these patients are really sick. We need to take care of them. So that was definitely the hardest experience was seeing that. Um, no other really words for that. Um, other than that, though, once I did get up to the floor, the, the main routine didn't really change that much. I mean, there was the usual, it was difficult to get the medications, pharmacy was overwhelmed. Um, we would have no, one nursing assistant for about 20, maybe 25 patients, which means that we don't have a nursing assistant, basically. Um, all the nurses were getting seven patients. They usually try to keep us at six, but realistically, there's just no way. There were so many patients. Um, the managers were just constantly asking us about safe discharges and there literally most of the days there were no safe discharges. We can't safely discharge somebody that has COPD and that can't charge their nebulizer if there's no electricity. So there were a lot of admissions that you don't really think about. Um, imagine a lot of places didn't have power. So we were getting a lot of patients like dialysis patients. Dialysis patients that went several days. I mean, some people missed two dialysis treatments and they would come in with potassiums of nine, creat creatinines of 13. So these are just things that you don't think about. Like, oh yeah, if there's no power, then people can't get dialyzed. So it was very interesting for that reason also. Um, I had patients, like I said, with COPD exacerbations that were coming in. Um, a lot of people just with severe dehydration or heat exhaustion were coming in, but not nearly as bad as obviously the nursing home patients. And then also I had a patient that had an MS flare. She hadn't had a flare in I think a year, but because she had to uh, climb up 13 flights of stairs, it just triggered um, an MS flare. So there were so many patients that probably wouldn't have been hospitalized otherwise. So I felt like the acuity per se of on the floor was not as bad as it normally is. 
because normally we just have patients recycling. You know, you have um, seven patients, you discharge three, you get three new admissions. Well, some days I wouldn't discharge anybody. And so it was sort of nice in that aspect because I could come back to the same patients, which I like, I guess, depending on the patient. <laughs> But um, my patients were all really sweet that day, and so it was really nice. Um, but just to give you an idea, uh, our manager came up and he was like, we really need safe discharges. If you have any, please speak up. Let you know people know. And he said that the hospital's capacity is 400 patients or something like that, and we are at 480 inpatients, not including what's in the ER. So the hospital was just completely swamped. Like I said, I worked 11 days in a row, and I probably would have kept going, except I started losing my voice. And so I just knew, okay, that's it. But um, ultimately what I was doing was I was just working my shift, going home and sleeping, and I felt pretty good. I mean, I think my diet's pretty good. I fortunately had electricity. I'm not sure how I would have felt if I didn't have electricity. But, um, you know, my situation was pretty good, so it felt really good to be able to work all of those days. I think the main takeaway that I have from this experience was you definitely get a different feeling. It's just like after a disaster, people are more kind, more um, generous, not as on edge. And a lot of the patients were very grateful for the care, which doesn't always happen. You get a lot of people that are not grateful, very demanding, but in this case, a lot of the patients were extremely grateful that the hospital was letting them stay and that we were allowing them to stay even though they were safely sort of taken care of per insurance reasons or whatever, but since it wasn't a safe discharge, they were allowed to stay because of that. So I felt like there was a lot more gratitude. Also, the hospital was doing a lot of things to help the staff. A lot of the staff did not have electricity, just like a lot of the patients didn't. So I saw the chief nursing officer handing out ice to patients as they were leaving, no, sorry, not patients, to nurses as they were leaving. I thought that was really sweet. They were also giving us um, meals that had its own like heater in it, heater as in like self-heating meals, which was kind of cool. Uh, there was just, and they were giving away like care packages with crackers, with like personal items, um, stuff like that. So. There was a lot of generosity that I saw. Also, like I mentioned before, they were offering childcare. They were so desperate with getting nurses and, and a lot of the childcare places were closed because of no electricity that the human resources department became basically the care, child care center. So that was nice. So all in all, it was a really, really great experience. Um, I hoped, I hope that we don't have to go through this again, but um, you know, I thought that it was nice considering what it was. So anyways, I hope this helps you out if you're ever thinking about working at disaster relief or if you're assigned to work disaster relief. Um, ultimately, I thought it was a very, very nice experience. So, all right guys, I can't wait to talk to you again and I will see you in my next video. Bye.